Hello, I am making this video to document my cancer journey as well as possibly help anyone else going through something similar. I was diagnosed with cancer on March 19th, 2021. I have stage 3 adenocarcinoma, stage 3A, and it's non-small cell, um, which is non-smoking uh, lung cancer. Um, unlike other biopsies, they put you under to where you're asleep and they get the biopsy, you don't have to feel it or anything like that. But with the lung biopsy, you have to stay awake. And so the doctor would put the needle in and then they'd put me in for the scan and they'd go check it on the screen and make sure they were heading in the right direction. So then by the time it was right at my lung, the doctor said, okay, I need you to stay really still for this. It's gonna hurt. It was like one, two, three, I held my breath and he went in my lung and it felt so painful. And then he said, um, hang on, I'm gonna go in and get one more sample. So then he went in again and had me hold my breath and that hurt too. We are on our way to Kaiser for my second biopsy. This biopsy will be of my lymph nodes in the center of my chest. My biopsy is done sore throat and my breathing is very dry and scratchy. I, I thought I would post an update since it's been a while. I naively went into post-treatment thinking that each day I would wake up feeling a little bit better but it's actually been the opposite and I was waking up feeling worse each day until I reached a steady low and I've been at that steady low now for a few days. Chemo and radiation continue to work after treatment so they're doing just that which is awesome but it's hard on me and my esophagus is really burnt from radiation it's getting sores in it and i can't eat i'm on a liquid diet it even hurts to drink water so that's really hard i feel really weak i'm trying my best to get in as many nutrients with the protein shakes as i can but overall i'm struggling and my mouth gets sores from chemo and my esophagus is getting damaged from radiation because my esophagus is in the path of my lymph nodes that have cancer. I went to City of Hope and I woke up with my mouth much worse. I don't know if you can tell how swollen it is. Um, I'll spare you from having to see inside. It's disgusting. But I got a pharmacy worth of medications for my rash which looks like it might be spreading, but I have medicine for that. And uh, for my mouth, I'm having a bad reaction to immunotherapy, so I have to take a break from immunotherapy right now. Protein shakes have been my only way to get food in, so I tried to. Well, I tried to order from the. Um, breakfast menu here at the hospital and it hurts so bad I'm trying to get through it it's just so painful it goes all the way down to my esophagus that is my powder that I have to take for radiation every before every breakfast and before every dinner 30 minutes before mix it with a quarter cup of water and it heals my mouth and esophagus um, my mouth gets sores from chemo and my esophagus is getting damaged from radiation because my esophagus is in the path of my lymph nodes that have cancer now i need to pick an outfit for to for today it needs to have an open chest so that the nurses can access my port. Here's my chest. This is what radiation is doing to my chest. Um, so it's burning the skin and then it's getting the esophagus and then it's getting the cancer. Yay! Get the cancer! <laughs> and then there's my port. Uh, okay, here's what I chose. A um, easy romper. Kyle and I are on our way to City of Hope. It is 10:22. We just got gas, and uh, chemo day. Chemo day is 
our most, is it our most stressful day? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I get scared and I get anxiety. I'm done with chemo. It is 6.28. Kyle picked me up. He was there all day waiting in the library. And he got me flowers in the back. And then... Let's start by noticing my weight gain. I don't know. I'm in my son's room. When my team told me I was going to start taking prednisone, it was to combat a bad reaction to cancer treatment. So um, they told me that I was going to have a lot of weight gain and they really put an emphasis on the weight gain. And my first thought when they told me that was good because I had been on a puree and liquid diet and I dropped a bunch of weight drastically while I was hospitalized for this bad reaction to immunotherapy. So my first thought was good. I need to gain some weight. I need to be stronger to battle this, battle this cancer. One of the ways I found my cancer was through my rib pain. I can't sleep on my left side because it causes a lot of rib pain. My cancer's on my left side. And then I also have to sleep sitting up or like at an incline because um, ever since my first biopsy, I have like nerve damage to where if I sleep flat, I will wake up in excruciating pain. Hello everyone, today is chemo day one. This is my second time doing chemo. I'm feeling sick to my stomach with the idea of chemo about to start, but I'm excited to get this chemo in and have it start killing the cancer. Um, I'm nervous, I'm scared, but I'm trying to stay positive and hopefully all will go well. Just wanted to jump on and give a quick update on how I'm doing post chemo. This past week has been really rough. I have been basically bedridden for the whole week. Chemo is really kicking my butt this time, but I'm still gonna keep fighting. It feels like there is a war going on in my lung, and I'm sure there is. Uh, I'm very short of breath for any movement, any walking around or anything. I've had a lot of nausea. I take the nausea medicine that I'm prescribed, but it only can help so much. And then I've had really bad headaches every day. And Rosmick called me, he's the NP to my oncologist, and he said that they found four lesions in my brain, tiny, um, but it's cancer and there's cancer in my brain. So, I have an appointment with Dr. Amini, my radiation oncologist, tomorrow, so we can come up with a radiation plan. Last night was chemo, yesterday was chemo, and I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling a little unwell overall, but okay. A little nauseous. Um, I'm about to go in for my brain radiation setup and I'm very scared for that. Um, I'm not normally a claustrophobic person, but since cancer, I have found that going in these brain MRI machines um, where they have your head held in place, you're kind of like held down to where you can't move. I get claustrophobic. I feel like I'm in a Saw movie. If anyone watches those horror movies. Hello everyone. I am done with my radiation, brain radiation setup. It went really well. I'm happy. I took my Ativan and it didn't make me feel drunk, but it made me feel relaxed, so that was good. Uh, today is day one <coughs> of brain radiation, targeted brain radiation. Um, I'm not doing too well today. I'm really down and scared. It's mainly the consent form I had to sign for this that's getting in my head. Um, anyways, I did brain radiation. Um, I have a headache right now, but I had a headache going into it, so chemo gives really bad headaches. I think it's just from chemo. Um, other than that, I feel fine, a little nauseous. I don't know why it's so hard for me to do brain radiation. It is so mentally challenging for me. I don't know why. Just do it, Jen. And I did it, I did it. 
great job. I did it. And today is radiation day two, brain radiation day two. My sister is taking me. I completed my second radiation. Woo! Yay. I would say it went a little better this time. I was still terrified. I still felt the need to rip off of the table and run, but I didn't. I sat through it. And so the Ativan, the two Ativan helped a little bit. Good morning everyone. Today is Thursday and it is my final day of brain radiation, targeted brain radiation. I'm terrified. My stomach is turning a little bit. Uh-oh, that can't be good. Um, hopefully it goes well. I don't know if you can tell I was crying a lot last night because I'm scared and sad. Um, let's go. Let's do it. I did it! I did it, I did it, I did it. I did it. All done. I did it. Distinguished Patient Award. I did it. I did it. I did Got a couple souvenirs to take home. Oh. <laughs> Hello, today is chem chemo day two. Oh, I thought you were trying to get in. Oh. Ashley took me today. I already completed my infusion. My white blood cell count was low, um, but I have the booster on my belly again. All right, Jenny's home from chemo. Round two of round two. And Flower has owned mommy ever since she came home. Good girl. It has been a while since I posted. It has been a week and two days since my last chemo. I think a week and two days. Um, and I haven't posted because I've been really unwell from chemo. And when I'm really unwell from chemo, it makes me feel really down and depressed. And so I've been avoiding posting, to be honest. I feel down in the dumps. Today is supposed to be chemo day, but Ellis has a performance at his school, his first ever school performance, so I couldn't miss it. And so I will actually have chemo tomorrow morning, but I still come in today to get my blood work done and see my doctor to ask questions and get approval for chemo. So hopefully all goes well. All right guys, I'm at chemo, getting my infusion. And guess what? Kyle's here. Hello everyone, today is the day after chemo. It was my third round of chemo this year. And it went well, it was my first time having a visitor so that was great. I had a CT scan this morning for my pelvic and chest. Let you guys know that we have good news. I just had a phone appointment with one of my oncologists and he went over scan results with me and he said that the chemo is working. My main tumor is stable and appears to be dead. The new nodules in my lung are smaller. The fluid in my lung appears to be gone and no lymph nodes showed up as enlarged. So this is really good news. I wanted to post a quick update on how I'm doing with COVID while having lung cancer because I'm lucky enough to have both. Um, it's been a full week since I tested positive for COVID and I'm feeling pretty good. I did five days of Paxlovid, which is the COVID medication to help me recover quicker so that I can do chemo. I was supposed to do chemo last Wednesday, but because of COVID I couldn't. I'm done with chemo. Chemo went well. It was actually pretty quick. I would say I was there for three and a half hours. And that's not bad at all. It was really nice having my sister there. It was really fun. Like I feel like being a mom with cancer. I can't tell my kids I'll be there and it hurt my heart so bad because all I want to do is be there for my kids. The lady at the front desk was like, yep, there's a miscommunication, so we, sorry we can't help you. Not trying to find a solution, not like here's what we can do instead. Just like, nope, you didn't understand what I was saying. There was a miscommunication, so sorry. And Kyle steps in like, whoa, whoa, whoa. 
<laughs> this is my wife here. The thing that hurt my feelings was she was so rough with me, like kind of mean. And you know, when we're out and about, no one knows that I have cancer. No one knows that I have stage four cancer that spread to my brain. So however they deal with me is whatever. But this lady in particular, because she knows of my oncology stuff and is doing the paperwork for it, she's aware that I have cancer, that it's spread to my brain, and she's being mean to me. It's like, I would like a little bit of extra niceness, or just any niceness, you know. Today, I am going into an appointment at City of Hope. I'm here now. I am seeing a lung and heart specialist. I was supposed to see one in May, but he sadly passed away. So now I am seeing someone new today. Hopefully it will go well. Tomorrow is my brain MRI and I am terrified for it. <laughs> I do not like getting brain MRIs. So I'm here with my honey. Thank you guys for helping me come up with ideas how to get through the brain MRI. It went really well. I was really pleased with it and um, I owe it to you guys for helping me and I owe it to my family and myself. We all did great. <laughs> we got the results for my brain MRI this morning. I just had chemo but that's another story. The results are in and it's good news. Good news, amazing, good news, amazing good news. news. We're so excited. Um, so when they found the cancer in my brain, they had found five small cancerous lesions. And the results are that four of them are resolved. gone. Yeah, gone. the resolved. Yeah. Gone. And one is still there, but it's shrunk in by more than half um, in size and it's tiny. So they think that one will disappear, but there's a chance of it staying as uh, dead scar tissue. We just don't want it to get bigger and we don't want it to travel. Today is chemo day and I have a special guest with me, a first timer, and it is my dad. Hi. Hi dad. It's probably gonna go viral now that I'm on it. Huh? <laughs> Today is Friday, two days after chemo, round five, and it's been a rough one today. Chemo is definitely getting um, harder on my body the farther in I get to or get through treatment. Good morning everyone. It is chemo day. I'm at chemo. Hello everyone. Today is day one after chemo. It's the next day. I am feeling a lot better mentally, less sad and down. Um, you know, I still don't feel good. So there's that, but I feel a lot better after crying and saying what I was feeling, getting it off my chest, that I'm... Fatigue, weak, tired, shaky, um, shaky nauseous. Uh, but it's all to the point where like, I literally have to lay there and do nothing. It's, yeah. it's really rough. Yeah. I'm heading to City of Hope and he is gonna watch the kids. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome. <laughs> I am thrilled that I have no brain MRI. Those just send me into a terrible spiral of fear. So, yay, thank you. No, no brain MRI. Just a CT scan. No biggie. I can handle it. So, um, our doctor came in and said that the disease progression is on track and where we want it. Um, a lot of things are shrinking or stable which is great. The main tumor is uh, shrinking. Main tumor is continuing to shrink. Lymph nodes look good. All lymph nodes are clear. All parts of her body are clear. So cancer's not moving around. There are some new tiny little guys. Um, well, they noted here, there's a new guy in the right lung. Um, so my cancer is in my left lung, but now there's a new tiny nodule in my right, right lung. lung. They said they're not worried about it and that if it gets bigger, we will do a biopsy. But as of now, it's... Basically, at this stage, it's too small to know what it is. So I'm at City of Hope to get a an echo stress test. Joy. A pulmonary function test. Double joy. I'm very excited to leave. <laughs> um, the appointment with my pulmonologist went 
fine well. She said she wants to do a bronchoscopy of my right lung because it has pneumonitis and so they need to see if there's an infection in there. Um, after that I went to my echo stress test and it went well. <laughs> What's your definition of well? <laughs> Okay, so I've had four echocardiograms since ever, and they're all since I've been a cancer patient. They're all within the last year, and they've all been done at City of Hope. Two of the four were including this woman who did it today, and today was my fourth one, so they do like the echocardiogram during it, or oh. before and after, and so this lady hurts <laughs> she makes it hurt mm. she makes it hurt so I hate that I have the pain from my cancer and then when someone's pushing at it and pushing at it like at the physical pain it just hurts and it's it was discouraging that <laughs> the other two times I've had it done they didn't hurt me so it's mm. her who's hurting me and so it's like I kind of wanted to say something but I didn't want to hurt her feelings or like no be accusatory. If you have to go through it again, you just say, "Is does it have to be pressed that hard? Is that going to make it <laughs> accurate or not? You can just ask. Cause we are here at City of Hope to get my second bronchoscopy. <laughs> this one will be on my right lung. My right lung has not had anything like this, right? No. And we are looking for infection. I'm out of my bronchoscopy. It went well. the weight gain as a good thing but now I feel like it's just kind of annoying I'm you know I've gained over 60 pounds and it's still going up every time I go to the doctors it's up a little I wanted to pop on and give a quick update I received my results for my bronchoscopy and there is no new cancer that was found in my right lung so that's really good news and everything looked normal except for one bacteria growth which I am on antibiotics for now. That antibiotic causes diarrhea, so, so that's fun. I also met with a cardiologist at City of Hope and she was wonderful. She was very informative. She wants me to monitor my heart twice a day, every day for three weeks and get back to her and see what she wants to do next. I'm sad because I have stage four cancer and I don't want it and I'm afraid that it's going to take me from my kids and my husband sooner than I would like and I'm just sad about it and I'm scared and I'm determined to beat cancer and live as long as I can. I honestly think me living life the way I do, making the best of it and enjoying life as much as I can while I'm here, is beating cancer. So <laughs> even if, you know, worst case scenario happens, in my, in my book, I'm already beating cancer because it's not stopping me from living a beautiful life with my kids and my husband. <laughs> We went to go see her radiation oncologist, um, who we're always a little excited to see because he's really nice. And um, he went over the brain MRI, which we were awaiting those results. And we are happy to report that according to him and according to the MRI, there is no active cancer in Jenny's brain anymore. None. So. Uh, he showed us a couple of things. One is a, a believed to be a blood vessel, and he said he's pretty darn confident that it's a blood vessel because it hasn't changed, it hasn't done anything, and he said if it was cancer, it would have grown. We didn't target it with therapy, it didn't need it. He said I'm, it's a blood vessel. And then he said here's your last, the, your biggest spot on your brain. He showed us what it used to be, and then he showed us what it is now, and he's, it's like a tiny, tiny microscopic sliver, and he said that's just dead tissue. So he's... Mm -hmm. I'm just scared of it coming back. 
Yeah. Or them saying, oops, it was cancer and it's growing. No, no. I don't know. He, he, he did say there's a possibility of a rogue cancer cell in my sure. brain that can start making a home. Absolutely. And that's what I you do the know. scans for. Yeah. So he did say he wants to do another scan in three months just to make sure. And then he's going to push you to six months is his suggestion. It's the day after chemo, round nine. I'm feeling okay. I woke up feeling really dehydrated, nauseous, and I had neuropathy. And one of the side effects that I've had this, the last two chemos, is slightly blurred vision, which is a side effect that comes along with my chemo. But it's just ever so slightly blurred. Um, nothing crazy, but enough to annoy you. <laughs> annoy me. I don't like having cancer. There's always something happening, always something going on. And it just, it's so discouraging. And, uh, it's hard, mentally and physically. It's pet scan day and we are terrified. Absolutely. <laughs> Don't have much else except for, I'm scared. Yep, my injection is at 12, where they inject the radioactive fluid into me, whatever it is, and then... Something to make you light up like a Christmas tree. Let's hope I don't light up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> and then at 1, it, I get my PET scan. That lasts, from what I remember, 20 to 30 minutes. I don't quite remember because... I try to block it out of my memory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. We will give you guys results as we get them. I'm not sure when we'll get them. It's towards the end of the day today. Still haven't heard anything, so that's... Kyle's like, uh, they better not call before Halloween. Mm -mm. Let us enjoy our holiday. That's our night. We love Halloween. <laughs> Don't take that away from us. <laughs> Here is my before. And after, here it is. What do you guys think? I think it looks good. I'm really happy with it. And I think it disguises the chemo hair loss slash regrowth. It's still there, but it is much closer to, my new length is much closer to the new regrowth length. So. Morning, today is chemo day. Or so I think. We have not gotten PET scan results. I'm hoping to get them today. The purpose of the PET scan was to see if this current chemo is working. So that makes me nervous for what's going to happen today. But I might not even get results. I don't know. Yeah, we don't. There was nothing on my chart. So we'll see. So I was thinking chemo stopped working. So that's one treatment form of treatment gone that's not in my future that I can't do. And that scared me. Then I was thinking immunotherapy put me in the hospital and gave me a terrible reaction, possibly had the cancer spread. What if my next form of treatment does that? What if I have a terrible reaction and end up in the hospital and it causes it to spread more? So then I was panicking about that. Then I was thinking, what if the next form of treatment just doesn't work? and then I have to try another form of treatment. And then what if that one doesn't work? And then what's next after that? What if that doesn't work? And I just started panicking, thinking of each thing versus just right now. And I was so overwhelmed. And I just kept saying to Kyle, I can't do this, I can't do this. Got a call from the hospital yesterday and they asked me to come in today and tomorrow for a bunch of tests for the potential clinical trial. And that is part of the application process of the clinical trial to see if I qualify health-wise and also it'll if I get approved for it this will be the baseline that we all look at for where I started the clinical trial. Last time I got the fluid drain for my lung it's, it's you know it's not too bad it's fine it's not the worst thing but last time 
it all happened so quickly they were like you have fluid in your lung you need to get it drained go there next and then go to chemo so it was so quick that I didn't even have time to get scared or process it really it was just like okay gotta go get my fluid drain and then it was done and this time I'm just stewing in my thoughts of worry about the procedure you know they put a catheter through my ribs like in between my ribs and then into the lining of my lung to drain it I woke up from more pain and I just threw up so Kyle's coming home to get me nausea medicine and then I'm allowed to piggyback my pain meds with ibuprofen so I'm gonna take some of that I think hi guys it is the day after getting my pleural effusion drained as you guys saw the aftermath of that procedure had me in a lot of pain I was uncontrollably crying until a few hours later when the medication they gave me finally got the pain to wear off or lighten up. I'm gonna go in and do some blood work, see my doctor, and discuss whether or not I was approved for clinical trial or if we're gonna go the other targeted therapy route. I will let you guys know. I woke up in a lot of pain. I was in a lot of pain in the night. I didn't sleep the best. And I am in a new room in a new building because I was approved for the clinical trial. Yay! <laughs> Today is day two of my clinical trial, trial medication, um, also known as targeted therapy. So far today, I am feeling no side effects from that. I am still in really bad pain from my pleural effusion situation, so that's rough, but other than that, I feel fine. Like breaking out, I'm assuming it's the new medication, because I'm typically one who has clear skin, and I'm breaking out. My voice is totally gone now. Mm -hmm. I'm in agony. My body hurts so bad. If I still feel this way tomorrow, I'm gonna go to the ETC, which is the emergency room for my hospital. I don't know what to do. I feel so terrible. And you guys see, I'm like turning bright red from the new treatment, I guess, which is fine. I just don't know, I don't know what it is. I'm in pain. I've been taking Dilaudid for pain, but I need to still figure out a permanent pain management system because this is not quality of life. I've been in bed all day. Good morning, everyone. I still don't have my voice and I'm afraid to show you guys my face right now, but here it is. This is what, this is how my face is reacting to my new clinical trial. It hurts, it burns. It's like a rash and acne, or I don't know. Um, we met right away with our, or you got your blood drawn, which was quick, easy. And then we met with our clinical trial nurse, who's amazing, and um, took care of everything to where we weren't really supposed to see your oncologist today, but things worked out that way. Mm -hmm. And her clinical trial nurse got it to where we saw him, saw her, got everything under control, got an appointment with pain management, the whole nine yards. Um, sat down with her doctor. He uh, kind of went over, you know, looked at her face and said that it's a grade two, uh, what they call rash, a grade two rash. Mm. Um, they talked with the people who are piloting this or the people who have been piloting this uh, trial drug 
and it's common, it happens. So they prescribed her a cream to put on her face. So we're gonna start that today. Right now, if it just stays on the face like it is, then we're okay. It doesn't change her treatment. It doesn't change the dosage or anything like that. Um, they did say if it picks up or spreads or it does anything like that, then we have to start looking at different options for maybe reducing the dose or stopping altogether, whatever. But we're not there and we don't need to worry about that right now. They weren't concerned. They then ordered a chest x-ray, which you just got out of, just because... Uh, he wanted to make sure, like, see how the fluid's doing in there since the last thoracentesis, which was, like, two weeks ago now? A week and a half. A week and a half. He wanted to check on that. Um, Here's my rash. Looks pretty good right now, right? I would say. I had a little bit of a flare-up. I wear my mask a lot still because I have cancer. <laughs> my immune system is low. So even just for regular viruses um, but it seemed to be irritating my rash caused it to flare up a little bit so I need to wear my mask a little bit less right yeah I just don't feel good I feel like I need to eat something like I'm weak and like food would help me but I have this window where I can't eat before I take my clinical trial medication. I can't eat for two hours before and one hour after. And the time of day that I take my medication is usually around three. So I get hungry even though I eat before the window. My rash is looking pretty good. It's really red right now, but it feels really good and there's less of the white heads on it so I think it's getting a lot better I was wondering if so I started my medication my new cancer medication the clinical trial and I broke out in this rash acne thing and it's common in this with this medication as a side effect now I'm wondering is it always going to be there is it always going to be a thing or is there a possibility that starting a new strong medication I get this reaction and then once my body's used to it it stops or slows down that would be nice that's what I'm hoping for it's, it's hard today. explaining my pain because it's complicated it's not just a simple answer so like the nurse checking me in said any pain today I usually just say no even though I have chronic pain and I've had it for three years I usually just say no. But I could read your mind and tell me if I'm wrong. Okay. Oh, well, I'm at the pain doctor's appointment, so <laughs> yeah. I can't just say no. I can't say no. I have to tell her. And I was thinking, girl, just say no. <laughs> they don't care. Get to the so doctor. So I said, yes, I have pain. <laughs> so. And she says, okay, from a scale of one to ten, what is it? It doesn't work that way, at least not with my pains. No. Sometimes it's a six. Sometimes it's a two. Sometimes it's an eight. You know, like, so I was just like, oh, I don't know. And then I gave her a number and then where is it at? Okay, well, there's some <laughs> here. There's a lot over here. There's some here, like, I can't, I can't. Yeah. So we're at City of Hope. I have to go in to do blood work, see my oncologist, and then go to the clinical trial building and get observed and take my medication I completed a full cycle of the clinical trial medication. Yay, round of applause. So, how many days are in a... 21. 21 days are in a cycle. And so now I go in to see if my oncologist will approve me to continue and start a new cycle today. I am done with my appointments today, and I'm really happy. It went really well. Very well. My blood work was good, and my doctor approved me for cycle two <clears throat> of the clinical trial. Whee! Yeah, what a great day. Today was awesome. My doctor was really pleased with the look of my rash, the fact that it hasn't spread, that I'm doing better, <laughs> that I don't have any crazy side effects. I have a rash, a new rash. I will insert pictures or videos 
It's not the best lighting in here. You can't really tell here, but I'll insert pictures and my rash is so much better. I'm still like swollen. Um, it feels a lot better. I feel completely better from my allergic reaction, I guess, to the medication. I don't have the rash anymore. My skin isn't itchy and burning anymore. The swelling has gone down, so I think I'm in the clear and I'm really happy about that. I am at City of Hope and I am hopefully going to have a quick day here. We shall see. My face is breaking out in that acne rash thing again. Today is scan day. I'm about to go in and get my brain MRI. My eye, eyebrows twitching right now. Stress. <laughs> brain MRI and CT scan to check and see if my clinical trial is working then we went in for the CT and it was smooth pretty quick I didn't realize that you have to hold your breath that long I, I got to go back there because you were feeling real sleepy and I walked back and they had me sitting right outside the room and I hear hold your breath <laughs> relief and I guess oh it's the machine gosh, you're cracking is it the up. machine yes and I'm like, that's comforting. That's something everybody and wants to hear. And there's a little face that lights up when it's saying that. We are going to get the results from the brain MRI from a radiation oncologist today. And we're going to ask him if he could go over the CT scan with us. If not, we have an appointment in a couple days yeah. with another doctor. Mm -hmm. So I will let you guys know what he tells us. He said... There's no signs of cancer in your brain. Yep. Great. And then he went over the CT scan with us and he said everything looks the same or better. The same or smaller. Yes, so right now our only concerns of cancer in my body are the main tumor and the fluid in my lung. Yep. I had my mammogram a week or two ago and they said that it requires further imaging. So I'm going in today for another mammogram and an ultrasound of my breasts, right? Yes. I don't know if they check both or one. I think it said both. It's gonna be so much fun. I am out for my appointments and it took a long time. I hated it to be honest. It was fine. Everyone was nice and it was no big deal. But the, the long amount of waiting had me just thinking things I shouldn't be thinking and going routes me too. that I shouldn't be going. We're so I don't have results. I don't know when I will get those or how that works. Let's hope and pray that it was nothing. Yeah. I have dense breasts, as I've been told by doctors, and I was told that today, so it can make things look confusing. I forgot to give you guys the mammogram news. I got the results for the mammogram. The results made me very uncomfortable at first because they say that my left breast has a cyst and that it is likely benign, is that what it says? So I talked to my NP on the phone and he made me feel so much better about the results. He said that the ultrasound gets a closer look or a better look after the seeing the cyst on the mammogram. So that helps them to determine whether or not they think it's cancer and they do not. And I can get it checked again in six months and all should be well, right? Am I missing anything? No, that was it. And I have to go get my blood drawn right now. I will be meeting with a doctor. I will be possibly getting approved for my next cycle of treatment. And then I will be observed in the clinical trial building. Possibly an EKG and blood work. Not sure. We'll see. I'll let you know. Gotta go. Bye. It is 6 o'clock p.m. and we are leaving. Finally. Yay. Yay. Got approved for your next cycle. 
Yay, I started it. That was today. Yep. And... Blood work looked good? Yep. Now well, we're gonna go get the kids. Yep. Things are looking better. Um, treatment is showing that it's working based on my last scans. I have new scans in February. I have to have my scans closer together now because of the clinical trial. So my last scans were in December and my new scans are in February. I have this deep fear ever since I was diagnosed with cancer that the kids are going to view me as lazy and like I don't want to participate in all these things when really it's that I'm just sick and battling cancer and going through treatment. <laughs> we are here for possible approval of my clinical trial cycle four, is that right? Four. And I'm nervous, I'm excited, I'm mainly nervous. I was approved for my clinical trial cycle four. Yay, I'm so grateful. And the, the change that they made was they upped my dose because it appears to be working through my scans and my body is accepting it. You know, I have my side effects, but that's normal. And they're pretty much under control. I still have my rash and stuff, but that's okay. My pain has been a lot worse lately. The past two weeks, to be exact, it has been so much worse. It's like a nerve pain, like a shooting nerve pain in my back. Like it feels like where my lung is and it hurts really bad. The dilated helps, but only so much. And so I'm gonna talk to my pain team about that, see if there's a better option or if that is the best option, we'll see. I'm not happy, I'm sad and I'm scared because tomorrow is scan day. I will be going in to get a brain MRI and a CT scan, and I am absolutely dreading it. I'm just so scared. And then obviously with my brain, I'm afraid that I will have the cancer back in my brain. So another struggle of it is it hurts for me to lay down. Um, ever since I had my first lung biopsy, I can't lay flat for a long time without it hurting. And with ever since the fluid happened in my lung, I can barely lay at all without it hurting. Um, I mean, if I lay flat, it hurts. Even a quick CT scan, it hurts. So the brain MRI will be 20 minutes or more than 20 minutes, I don't know. And I have to lay in there flat the whole time. So I'm dreading the fact that it's gonna hurt. I'm here at City of Hope, ready to get my brain MRI and CT scan. This, the brain MRI is first, which I am so grateful for because that's the harder one for me to get through. So I'm glad that I can breathe after that. Mm -hmm. And I took my Ativan and my pain medication. Hopefully they will help, we will see. So I did it. I did the brain MRI. I got through it. I'm so proud of myself. Um, I could cry right now if I wasn't at City of Hope just because it takes a lot out of me. Um, so I went in and the girl who asked me what kind of music, they do music all the time here. One time I didn't have music Every other time and I think that was the time it was spreading. cancer was in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that's the reason. It's a sign. Um, oh, we can't see that because then if it has no music in the future, I don't want to think that. Basically, I have been on my period for 16 days now and I have had clots during this. It's the heaviest period I've ever had and I've had really heavy periods my whole life. And so it was just really concerning to me and I wasn't feeling well tonight. But as you can probably hear, I have a cold and I'm going through cancer treatment <laughs> and I took Dilaudid today from pain or because of pain and then what was the final thing? 
and then I'm on a heavy period. So, I mean, it makes sense that I wasn't feeling well. I just felt kind of weak, like I needed to lie down, and so I did, but then laying down helped me feel better, so. So we started our day with my gynecology appointment, gynecologist appointment, mm -hmm. and it was because I'm having the crazy heavy period, or the crazy period, some days are light, some days are really heavy, and I've had so many clots. Today is day 25 of bleeding, and I had two large clots while I was at the hospital today um, in the restroom, but just worth noting. So I went to my appointment, we talked all about what's going on, and it didn't seem like a big surprise to her. It must be common yeah. after chemo for my demographic, I'm not sure. And what I didn't realize was today was an impromptu pap smear. Yay, surprise! Lots of fun. <laughs> and then we went to see my oncologist for scan results. And oh my gosh. <laughs> and of course they were nicer than ever as always i'll take the scan results <clears throat> yes so it started out with seeing um your np who came in positive as always and of course remember we i peaked a little bit and was a little worried about what the scan said so he came in and started off by asking questions about your health and your pain and period and all that. And then he said, okay, so we got your scans and the chest looks good. So basically the chest was pretty stable. And then there was a little something that showed up in the abdomen belly area that was like a, a lymph node. A lymph node that was a little bit larger. A little bit larger, but he said, no concern right now, just monitor let's keep an eye on it then so he was done talking about that and he was overall really positive so chest scan was stable, stable and one lymph node was a little larger but it was good overall but good overall then we got to the mri and he said good but there were three lesion lesions in the brain that were about the size of the tip of a pencil so tiny tiny like microscopic not even able to be measured like they didn't have any measurements they didn't, there's no measurements it's just they noted but three. in the past when i had them they had measurements right. right yep so three tiny microscopic white spots now these spots were not there before these aren't left over from previous spots these are in different places um so they are new uh they are not ready to call because of the size and because of the shape there's nothing to give it any definition right now, according to him. So they are just going to monitor these three spots for four weeks, do a new MRI, and see what they've done in those four weeks. If they've grown, then they can pretty much say, okay, that's cancer, and then go through with targeted radiation, brain radiation, which he's done before, um, which when we cross that bridge, we'll cross that bridge. Um, but... And, you know, this is where we were concerned. We were wondering if that meant you were going to have to stop this clinical trial. And he said, first off, no, because right now these aren't confirmed anything. We could just monitor these and then they don't do anything next time or whatever. Do targeted brain radiation and keep you on blue. So it doesn't... As of right now. As of right now. It could, it could change. change. So that doesn't... So long story short, he ended with that. Um, very positive so then we were kind of told right then that we're going to continue with clinical trial but that they have a new strategy mm -hmm. and then your doctor came in mm -hmm. um, to just kind of final exam check her um, he gave me some homework um, because there's the three spots that they're going to monitor he wants me to kind of make sure that some of her functions are good 
So like there's an eye test that he gave me to do for her. There's a <laughs> finger to nose touching test that he gave Where me to I go do like for her. Like this. Yep. And he has to move it really fast. And then there's a my husband went back to work after being on leave to care for me and the kids. And since he's gone back, I'm doing so much more physically that my pain just a few days into him going back started getting way worse instantly. And since then, it's still getting worse because I'm still doing more. And I have these new pains. And... I'm not as afraid of pain medication as I was. I was so afraid I'd be some weird zombie or something. And while taking the pain meds, I realized I wasn't some weird zombie. So I'm less afraid of them. But I need to take my clinical trial medication. And as you guys know, when you're throwing up, the last thing you want to do is drink water, eat food, and take medicine. But I have to take my medicine with food, so I need to eat. I'm gonna do crackers, a little bit of water, and hopefully I don't throw this dose up. Last night I threw up about four or five hours after my clinical trial taking it, so I need to call my clinical trial nurse and ask what counts, what time frame counts as throwing up your dose, because I need to put that in my diary of my clinical trial if, if it counts as throwing it up. I never saw the pills in my vomit. Yeah, I think so. And I am at City of Hope really early with my dad. I have my mask on to keep him safe. Hopefully my bug is gone. If I feel so much better, um, but just in case. And then um, I have to go get my ultrasound because I have been on my period since January 15th. You guys know I started hormones, but those that my period is still here. It's lighter, but it's still here. So we have to figure out what's going on. So I'll get an ultrasound and he will probably stay in the waiting room for that. <laughs> Hello everyone, I am back from City of Hope. I just got out of the shower. That's why my hair is all wet. And you can see the weird thinning regrowth from chemo and whatnot. It's so bizarre, but hopefully it'll figure itself out. It's definitely thinning from this treatment, so I think that's why it's getting extra weird. So who knows what the future of my hair holds? We shall see. Um, the ultrasounds went well, so there was an external ultrasound to see my uterus and ovaries and everything, and then there was an internal ultrasound, and she showed me what I was looking at, but it's hard to tell unless you're specialized in it. And they don't give results at these appointments. It was just, she said it looked good and that my endometrium maybe is thick. And if I've been on my period for this long, then it should be thinner. So that was all I really got. Um, I have an appointment next week to, um, Get the results from the gynecologist so hopefully she will have some answers and we will see what's going on it is you know it's been a month and a day that i've been on my period so some days are really thin or light some days are really heavy it's been all over the place i don't i don't know what's going on but hopefully it figures itself out i know he's gone but all i want to do is text him and say, how are you doing, Michael? How are you, how, how are you? What happened? Tell me what happened. Were you okay? Are you okay? I just wish I could text him and see how he's doing or how it was, how he was. I hope it was peaceful. I pray it was peaceful. I'm praying for his family. I'm just so sad for him and his family and I wish I could talk to him I wish I could talk to him so bad it's weird the deep connection you make with these cancer friends we never met in person and I told my husband I said I want to go visit my friend 
Michael, can we go visit him one day when we're better? And in my mind, that's when I thought I would do it, was when I'm better. When he's doing better, when I'm doing better, we can meet up and actually like go to dinner, his family and my family, like we can really get to know each other better and be friends for life. <laughs> It's just really sad. Hug the ones you love because you never know when something like this is going to happen. It came out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting it and I wish I could just talk to him one more time, but I'll talk to him as an angel. <laughs> I'll talk to him while he's an angel. Hopefully he's listening. <laughs> well, I love you guys. I will talk to you later. By the way, I'm feeling so much better from our flu bug. It's I am out of my appointment and it was fine. Not the most informative appointment. I learned that my pap smear results were good. The ultrasound showed that there were no masses. Good news. And then I did have a thick wall lining in the ultrasound but she said that I because I'm still menstruating is that the word um it makes sense for it to be thicker right now um I will continue taking the hormone until hopefully this stops and I have an appointment in about a month to check on how things are going and if the bleeding continues, I'll have to get another ultrasound, but we will see. I woke up in really bad pain, so I'm on the couch with the heating pad on. Kyle gave me my pain meds, and we're just chilling. <sighs> Today has been rough. This whole pain world is so confusing to me. I don't understand it. <laughs> I've had chronic pain since I was diagnosed, or since before I was diagnosed. And I just have lived with that pain. I didn't start the pain meds for that pain. I started it for worse pains that I've been getting since I had the fluid and the fluid drained. It's like those, the fluid and the draining did permanent damage or something to where I have like really, really bad pain now. Like worse than my chronic pain, normal chronic pain. I started getting very bad anxiety tonight regarding the brain MRI tomorrow and the results that come from it. It's all weighing on me and eating me up to where I feel like I could cry at any moment. Happy Wednesday. It is the day I will be receiving my brain MRI with sedation. The first time I will be having it with sedation. So I am nervous, eager to get it done and over with, and ready just to be done. I have a naked finger so that they can check my pole socks fine with no issues. You guys know I'm starting that trend. <laughs> we'll see what, how I feel. I feel a big, oh, a huge weight lifted off of me. I'm so glad it's done and over with. Oh, you do, huh? Yeah. Well, good. I'm so glad it's done. I feel a big weight off of me. Good. Even though I'll be back yeah. <laughs> in two months. Right. I'm just so glad it's done. Good. Um. <laughs> you did it. I know. It's just so much. Anyway, when they were bringing me in, it was like this, it's the same area I go for MRIs. And then I'm on a wheeled bed and with all these people looking after me, I felt self-conscious. And like, is this really necessary, Jen? Yep. And I felt really self-conscious. And I was on the incline. They had me laying on a bed on an incline. And I was thinking, I feel fine. I don't think I need this. And then they go, okay, we're gonna lay you flat to get you ready for the sedation. And they put the bed completely flat and I instantly started feeling all the pains start to do their thing. And I thought, good thing I'm doing this because for some reason I have so much pain when I lay flat 
So I was very grateful to be getting this. <laughs> I have stages where I am so hopeful and I'm still hopeful, but I'm really positive and I think I'm gonna live 20 more years. I'm gonna live 40 more years. And I get all excited and I convince myself that it's real. And even if it's not gonna happen, I'm gonna believe it's gonna happen. And I really am happy. And right now I'm in one of the stages of I'm terrified and I'm just thinking of my children not having a mother. And it eats me up that I can't be there for them to make them feel better when they need me, you know? Anyway, he shared that there are lesions that we're looking at in the brain. Same three lesions same, as last time. Same three as last time. Remember we told you they were microscopic tiny. Um, those same three are still there. And One is b the bigger of the three, uh -huh. but it, go oh, sorry. That's okay. And from the last scan to now, nothing has changed that much. Um, there's nothing new, and then the only one that's slightly microscopic larger is now four millimeters. There's a measurement on it, um, which is, you know, super small. And um, he said it's not in a place that's worrisome. It's in you the know, front. As far as location, it's in the front. So he felt more comfortable watching it still and waiting for another four to six weeks. He said he doesn't want to have to go in and do radiation if we don't have to. And right now, they're not very concerned about what they're seeing on the MRI. Um, and he asked us both, you know, he gave us multiple paths we could take. He didn't say, this is what I want and you guys are gonna do it. He said, you can either go this way or this way. We agreed with him and said that we feel very comfortable in his decision. He's been amazing so far. So um, we kind of agreed to let it hang out for another four to six weeks and get another repeat scan and then if in then time it grows a little more or it's even bigger or there's more then we'll start doing the plan for radiation is what it sounds like yeah i'm out of city of hope we couldn't film before because we we're stuck in traffic but i'm out i did my ct scan it went well had an easier time laying flat this time Good. So I don't know if that's a good sign. Like, sure it is. Maybe there's less fluid. Maybe the cancer's dying because it was easier to lay flat than it has been. Or it's that my team has figured out a good recipe for the pain management to where there was less discomfort. Either way, Either it's way good. good. Uh, yeah. Something's going in the right direction. And he came in and said, "Scans look good. Everything looks good. Here's the copy of the scan results." And um, everything. He was really happy with how the scan looked. So, um, you know, we did a, a rough read through of the impression and everything says stable or a little bit smaller. Except so everything was stable and then a few spots were smaller. So that, I mean, he, that that's great. You can't. I'm staying on this treatment. And we're staying on this treatment. That's good. Got approved for another cycle. And um, very, very good news today. So we are happy. Happy, happy, happy campers. I panic when I get good news. Like I panic when I get bad news and good news. And I think I panic when I get good news because it's that realization of where I'm at. Like, oh, I'm happy and celebrating the fact that the cancer in my body is stable. And though it's great and amazing that it's stable, I'm celebrating that the cancer inside of my body is stable, if you guys know what I mean. It's just freaky. <laughs> I can't believe it's still two years into my diagnosis and I still can't believe that I have cancer. Okay, so today I went to my pain appointment. He said he'll be in contact the whole time um, and we'll be figuring out what's going on. So, I told him about the second pain episode since starting gabapentin to where I believe it's the gabapentin. He's not fully convinced that it is the gabapentin. He said we will stop gabapentin for two weeks. He's gonna have me taper off correctly, but he's gonna have me off of gabapentin for two weeks to see if I get that pain. If I do get that pain, then it wasn't, or it's probably not the gabapentin. I am going in for blood work. 
I am going in. Today's like a treatment day. Now I don't need to stay for treatment like I used to because I've graduated from that part of clinical trial. Yay! But I need to get approval from my oncologist to continue treatment and then I need to get more of that treatment. I bring it home in pill bottles and turn in my old bottles, turn in my diary of information, of side effects and whatnot. And then I have an ultrasound, a vaginal and pelvic ultrasound because you guys know I had the crazy bleeding going on for a while and it seems to be getting more normal. So we will see. We're hoping and praying that the ultras ultrasound will show normal normalcy. I had a thick wall last time, but I believe I shed that. I don't really know, but I believe I shed that. So we are hoping and praying for thin walls. Thin walls. If not, they want me to get a biopsy and my blood work is done. The nurse was so incredibly nice. And now I'm headed to get my vaginal ultrasound and pelvic ultrasound. Yay. Yes. Going. We're go At least it's an easier procedure today. Count the wins. The ultrasound went well. I am now outside enjoying the fresh air. I don't have a lot of time. I know we can hope and pray for a lot more time. But there's no way I have a lot of time. I mean, Kyle would probably kick my butt for saying that. He tells me don't think that way and, but I'm just trying to be real. I can't pretend when it's myself. I can't pretend that it's all going to be okay. I feel the difference of how I was when I was first diagnosed with stage 3 cancer and now here I am a year after stage 4 cancer diagnosis and my lungs are not what they used to be, my body's not what it used to be. I feel all the struggles. It's okay to be broken. It doesn't mean that's it. That's where you're going to end up. I know I'm going to pick myself up and enjoy life just like I did yesterday. Today it's just going to be a little harder because of how I'm feeling inside. But I love my kids and my husband too much to not try my hardest. I'm starting my day with a pulmonary function test. If you don't know about these, they're not the most fun thing for a lung cancer patient to do. <laughs> I completed my pulmonary function test. I will give you guys the details on that later. But I had to have a blue breathing treatment with it this time, which is called something like albuterol. It's like an inhaler for people with asthma. Yeah, to see if that made any difference. And it did feel like it made a difference. But now I feel really jittery, so I don't like that feeling. Yeah. But I'll give you guys more details after my pain appointment. Come it up. We are out of my appointments. All went well. My pulmonary function test was okay, fine. It was my least painful pulmonary function test to date, so I was very grateful for that. I, I think it means that we have a good pain management situation going on and I didn't really notice much of a difference Felt about the same We'll see Got through a Sedation MRI And then our CT Long emotional day But we did it. We're all done. Now we get to leave throat hurts really bad. I just... Mm. I hate being in this situation. Mm -hmm. 
It's so hard. Everyone, today is the day that I go to City of Hope to get my scan results to see how the cancer in me is doing and how my cancer in my brain is. So I'm gonna be here hiding for the rest of the day. That's not what we were hoping for. No. I hope we don't sound dramatic. <laughs> so if you know, uh, if you've been following Jenny's journey for a while, there's this pesky fluid and it just will not go away. And the last there's scan... Can there's cancer in the fluid. Right. The last scan... Hang on, let me blow my nose really quick. Okay, go ahead. When we, when we ended... the last scan. Well, I'll backtrack. When we did our last set of chemo, what got us to the point where they said no more was the pleural effusion kept growing and it had cancer cells in it. That's the liquid. Uh, around the lung or whatever and now this most recent scan showed that it it was mild to moderate the size of the fluid and now they're saying moderate to large so that's not good nearly as painful as last time oh it's just so incredibly painful I can't explain it it hurts all the way down to my elbow I don't know how all the way in my back, my shoulder, my chest. It feels different to breathe. It feels fragile, like I have to be careful. And cancer, I hate you too. We'll see, we'll see what they can do for me at ETC. All right, so we're at ETC, um, just saw a nurse, and now they're talking to the doctor. Pain's radiating from about an 8 all the way up to a 10, all on the left side, where, yeah, where you got your fluid drained. We're done. We've been here a long time. My NP came to visit me, which was really nice. I'm really tired and out of it from all the meds. I feel kind of, oh, nauseous. I'm gonna take off my shoes. You wanna say anything? Yeah, so we got out of the mm -hmm. thoracentesis, and then, like I said before, same kind of thing. As soon as we got out, um, a lot of pain. Excuse me. So we went to Hello everyone, I am back to being more myself, um, I'm eating some crackers, but right now my brain is just focused on how do I get through this PET scan on Monday, and once I'm through it, once I do it, then we can work on other stuff, so, uh, uh, I'm happy that I went to therapy. It wasn't as scary as I thought. It's embarrassing crying in front of a stranger, but that's where we were. It's pet scan day. I have been injected with the radioactive pet scan chemicals. I did it. We got through it. I did it. Yes. We're out. And I did it. Uh, I could cry so much. I'm so proud of myself. Did it. You should be. I'm so proud of myself. If you're wondering why we're not talking about the results, it's because we are scared. We are scared. I, I will be starting a new treatment next weekend. The verdict is in blue. Clinical trial blue stopped working for me. We're done. Moving on from that one. I'm sad. PET scan results came in, of course. and um, We haven't looked at them on paper yet. 
No, just based on our doctors, uh, they were both pretty just like neutral positive about it. Nothing crazy lit up on the PET scan. Just the fluid that we already knew about. No tumor explosions. No tumor explosion, no major organs. They said it looks like the fluid and maybe a couple lymph nodes, but nothing crazy. It's just my left lung area. Yeah. It's right? Yeah. But even there, it didn't even sound like there was much alive in the lung. Yeah, it wasn't much. It's just the fluid. So. And some lymph nodes. Blue was doing something for sure. Just not enough. Just not enough, it seems. And they don't want to waste time and then wait for things to get worse. And then, oops, we waited too long. So I think that's why they're. I don't want to speak for them, but I think that's why they're jumping to something different. My doctor has come to the conclusion that I need the catheter. I say this is bad news because I have pain when it's drained. So if I'm having it drained constantly, I'm afraid I'm going to be in pain always. We're here for my first day of treatment and I'm scared. You know, I could have a reaction or something. I know, that's what I'm afraid of too. You're... Well guys, I am home. That means treatment didn't go well. I had two bad reactions during treatment to where they had to stop and do the protocol and do it at a slower rate, give me the reaction meds. I don't know the details, I'm not a professional. Um, but after two times of having a reaction, you can't continue that day. So we had to stop. The doctors approved stopping and we're going to take a break for the weekend. Good morning. I look kind of rough because I'm feeling kind of rough. Um, as you see, one of the side effects of this new treatment that I was unsuccessful at completing is mouth sores so I have mouth sores all over inside and out of my mouth they hurt but I'm okay um, some other side effects I've experienced pretty intense neuropathy and to where it's waking me in the night that's settled down a little bit that was more the first few days after treatment I have body aches all over. I get these episodes of really bad body aches, usually in the middle of the night and the early morning. And I wake up with where I can't find co any comfort. I'm just trying pacing and trying different positions. Kyle woke up this morning and was massaging me and nothing would work. Um, I started having a panic attack during it. I told you guys that this treatment causes really bad body aches. And Kyle was looking through the side effects last night and the number one side effect is these body pains, back pain, neck pain, muscle pain, all these pains. So it's right on. Uh, my mouth sores, as you can see, are going through the process of trying to heal. I haven't had any new sores come up, so that's nice. Um, this pain is just unbearable. I don't feel good at all. And it's a little over a week after the infusion. I just don't get how I'm gonna get such a bigger dose for two days now this week. And I'm gonna be okay. I don't know how it works. Yeah, infusion day. This is Kyle got it for me. Cause you guys know I wanted a cute one for infusion. I want to dress cozy for these infusions because they terrify me. We did it. We did it. You guys, I did it. I completed it, and I'm alive. Yay. So truly grateful. I'm still in misery though. You know, this medication is known to be brutal during the infusion. I've never experienced any of these medications to be so brutal during the infusion, more so after. This is both. 2.30 in the morning. Um, 
Jenny's been trying to go to sleep since probably 8.30 with no luck. Um, I've been up cleaning and kind of watching her and she's taking little, little breaths, which would say shortness of breath, more than her normal lung cancer shortness of breath. So that's concerning. Um, the pain is there, obviously. So if you can see behind me, um, uh, we had to call uh, 911. And I'm gonna follow, I can't go with her. Um, I'll go around. Thank you. The doctor just came in and told us that blood work looked good and that unfortunately uh, Jenny's pleural effusion that we all know so well is not just under the left lung but she said now it's like all the way up and causing so much that it's pushing the lung and like pushing fluid onto this area um, to where they said they're gonna perform a thoracentesis um i'm in the hospital i've been in the hospital for a few days now we are trying to figure out what's wrong with me I've had a lot of fluid in my lung, I had it drained. I'm, my heart rate is really high or fast and I'm, I've been having trouble breathing. So I'm not doing well. I'm really sad and scared. I have a catheter now in the front of my chest and I've been getting that drained every day for a few days now. It hurts really bad, but we're trying to figure out. They're very receptive to pain medication here. Her full pain management team is on it and they are, you know, getting better and better. Her drainings are going well even though they're really painful. Today was already more hopeful yeah, yeah. with my pain situation. <clears throat> See how much I'm crying, 10 out of 10 pain. And then yesterday was the first time that it was a notch less in pain. So it was like nine out of 10 in pain. And it was just at the end when the draining was done. So normally we have a goal of amount we're draining and we drain that amount. Each day it's been lessening, mm -hmm. and so it, that's good. But yeah. yesterday it stopped draining all on its all own. On its own, which is big time. So you do this like squeeze of this pump thing, and nothing came, and they tried again, nothing came. So it was done. This time it was so hard during the draining. Yeah. It was so painful. It was so painful. From the second it started coming out, the fluid? Second it went in? Not the second. Once it started draining. Once it started... Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a hell of a lot of fluid your lung was in. And then at the end, <clears throat> like she let me pause a couple times. And then at the end, the only way I got through it was singing in my head, Lord, I need you. <laughs> and Good that's job. what got me it through the end. The kids are with Ash and Brad. Kids are with Ash and Brad. They said you might get to have either Tracy or I stay the night. We'll see. If not, it's okay. You told me that you're <laughs> going to be okay if you have to do it alone. A night away. No. <laughs> but I'm proud of you. You're doing good. I told my sister I'm gonna rest for a little bit. So she went down to the gift shop 
to see if they had anything good or if they had any colored pencils because those crayons in the Lisa Frank kit are just, those crayons where they're just, don't give much pigment, they're just a lot of wax. So she's gonna go see if she can have, find anything like that because we don't have any of it with us. Um, I'm so sleepy. I also took a medicine that's gonna make me pee a lot, so I have my commode. Is that what it's called, a commode? Next to my bed, and I'm gonna close my eyes, um, take a little snooze while she's out, and hopefully I don't fall asleep for too long. So they took, they set me up with an IV. They don't wanna mess with my port setup because I have constant meds going in there. Um, so they set me up with an IV. They took a, te a sample of my blood to get the blood type. Then once they have the blood type, they will come do the transfusion. And I hope it will be successful. The goal of it is to make me feel better and stronger. So let's hope and pray that things go well. We should say a prayer now, sis. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> um, but I feel like any sudden movement or wrong twist or turn will just do me in. Hopefully, hopefully these things stay on this track though because this is so much better, is it not? So much better, nine day. I was like, you guys saw me after. You hear that? What does that mean? That means they let me go home on Tuesday evening and uh, I'm so tired. And I'm doing a little better, wouldn't you say? Yeah. A little better. Pain's under control for the most part. Can we see him? Kyle drained my fluid and I'm doing okay, but it hurts. And I'm gonna nap for two hours. And I, I feel so exhausted from all that today. Getting used to that life, but um, they, you know, looked at her numbers and then they decided that she was okay to be discharged. Um, so she was, and it's been, you know, pain has been under control. Um, she's super exhausted from everything. I am having more pain from being out of the hospital and doing more stuff. So I'll talk with my pain team this week about that. Guys, we are at City of Hope, but at a different location for a pain appointment. We're here right on time. Right on time. So let's go. So far, I'm feeling nauseous, but I took some nausea medicine. Let's see if it helps. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we are out of my pain appointment. We thought, I thought we were recording, but we weren't. You wasted all I that. I was just talking to the camera. All that footage. Um, we were out of my pain appointment, it went well. We went to that to figure out my drowsiness in the daytime, as well as to figure out um, my, so I have a baseline medication and an as needed medication. Do we up the as needed or do we up the baseline? We decided to up the baseline medication and hopefully that'll lower the as needed medication but we'll see it as we go. And then, um, so that's all figured out. Easy peasy. Today is drain day. So we're scheduled to drain my lung every other day. And that is decided on my symptoms. So basically I decide. And that was discussed with the pulmonologist. As you guys know, draining causes a lot of pain for me. So Kyle was thinking, let's try every third day. And I said, yeah, we'll see what my symptoms are and we'll try to do that. And so today is drain day. We were planning to skip it and do tomorrow, but I'm having a lot of discomfort and pain. So we're gonna keep it as every other day. We're gonna drain again today because I'm, it's not feeling good, so it's a bummer. I was hoping to get to every third day, but 
I'm glad I'm able to read the signs from my body and that they said to go with my symptoms and if it feels like training would cause some relief then we go with it and I think it would so we're gonna go with draining today's um, a meeting with a pulmonologist who specializes in the drainings of her did you bring a kit yeah of her pleural fluid and she met with us on the phone about a week ago and asked if we could possibly come in this week to do um, a medication put into to Jenny's tube to hopefully um, break up some of the scar tissue that's building up in there and that to would make hopefully it a drain. in turn more uh, cause more fluid to come out when we drain every other day because we're getting a consistent amount coming out each day and she wants to see if we could get more if that's possible and that's what we're, we're here learning for. about my fluid yeah it's in the same exact area as your normal oncology team so we know exactly where we're going because it's the lung section yeah. i was told to bring a drain kit so i brought a dressing kit and a drain kit so she's gonna i don't know if she just wanted to see it or what Maybe she'll have a strain there. I don't know. Maybe she'll drain you. I don't know. But from what I gather, today is drain day. From what I gathered, she said she wanted to see it to see what we're working with, um, and then do this medication, and then we drain it ourselves later and see if there's a difference. It is the next day. It is Thursday. Wednesday. <laughs> Thursday. 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 And we are at my optometry appointment we are going to this to get my eyes checked to see if my eyes match the standard needed to join this clinical trial that I am trying to join we're all done with the eye appointment yeah it was nice I can't believe how much they do to your eye I, he didn't he didn't take a long time so I didn't get my nap he was in there right <laughs> after we in. stopped record, recording yep so I didn't get my nap. But eyes are, okay. eyes are still good and you passed on the eye department. So if it was just based on eyes, you would my be My eyes cleared. are good. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. He said your eyes are a little dry. Oh yeah. He said Can I can. Use some eye drops. I feel like they're bothering me to use eye drops, but he said he doesn't, it doesn't look like they're to the point where they're bothering me. No. And I don't feel them being dry. I've had them dry with different treatments. We are back at City of Hope, and we are going to do blood work. My eyes are still really sensitive from being dilated, so I'm just closing my eyes right now. I have my shades on, but just closing my eyes. Like, I was able to do brain MRIs for the longest time with no issues, and then I started getting different things. So anyways, I go in, I was really positive in my mind, like I can do this, I can do this. <laughs> when I did the CT scan, I realized it didn't hurt to lay flat, it hurt to the process of getting flat hurt, so I had to use like my core strength to lower myself down, and using those core muscles hurt, especially around my catheter, it hurt, and um, so, that had me hopeful for the brain MRI because typically it's the laying flat for 20 something minutes and that hurts me and that's hard for me. So then I went into this, everyone was really nice. Oh, I asked them to help lower me. Nice. I said, I'm gonna need help. I struggle with pain and I struggle with breathing. I said, that's about it. And they're like, all right. How'd they do the oxygen? There's like a long hose. Wow, no problem there. Hello everyone, it is me, Jenny. I am coming on to say hi, and I'm sorry, I'm so sorry I was gone for a week without saying anything. I wasn't planning to be gone. It just kind of happened. I posted, I think about a week ago, 
and my last video was maybe my scans and that went well and now we're waiting on results and one day I had a bad episode to where we had to call 911 again I had to take an ambulance and go to the emergency room uh, that was scary very scary and I am fine as you can see I'm fine I'll make a video about that but I feel like I'll end up blabbing for too long and Kyle has to drain me in a little bit we time it with my when I took my medicine so I have to go soon um, to get my fluid drained but I ended up being okay the hospital in Oregon was great the ambulance in Oregon was great and the people in Oregon like the doctors the nurses the EMTs everyone they were so great and kind I loved everyone it was it was wonderful I told Melanie if I do end up living in Oregon ever I would be happy with the healthcare out here because they're really nice the healthcare workers and um, she was all excited but I'm not leaving because I like staying close to my doctor and I still need to get my scan results so my team I think they wanted to give them to me this week and we were like no thank you <laughs> we're on vacation we don't want to know even if it was good bad I didn't want to know because I wasn't thinking about it I was just blocking it out so we'll probably get scan results this week as well hello everyone today is scan results day well technically it's the day after scan results day we had scan results day yesterday we started filming in the morning we went in for my appointment we received the results and we stopped filming for the rest of the day we could not film because we were crying the whole day and couldn't find it in ourselves to build up the strength to talk about what was going on. Uh, I think we let out as many tears as we possibly could have. <clears throat> and I'll go over skin results. So yeah, now we can talk. So here's my man. <laughs> go ahead. So her doctor came in and went over the scan results and we'll start with the lungs um, there are tumors growing in the left lung there are tumors growing in the right lung she still has her left pleural effusion which has cancerous fluid in it and she now has a small pleural effusion on the right side um, and then there were about if I'm remembering correctly, five to six new lesions that are growing in her brain. And then the kind of bombshell of the scan was, if you think of the brain as an orange, their lesions are in the pulpy area. Those are treatable with targeted radiation. And then there's this area around the brain that's kind of like the rind of an orange, the mm -hmm. peel of an orange. Mm -hmm. There's cancerous fluid in there, mm -hmm. they found. That's called LMD disease. Um, and I believe it travels all the way down the spine. Goes all the way down the spine. And that one's um, evil. Mm -hmm. That one is not treatable with traditional chemos or targeted therapies because of the blood brain barrier. They just don't travel to that area. And targeted radiation like she's gotten in the past is not effective in treating that area. So we were told that this LMD is kind of untreatable. Um, if this was three months ago, our doctor said it's it was completely untreatable. It didn't exist to try to treat this. Now there's something they can do to hopefully help a little, but it's not much. So... Now it just buys a little time? Buys a little bit more time. 
So to say the least, the scan results were not good. And they were very hard to hear. And then I asked my doctor if this now meant we had a timeline because we have not had a timeline this whole journey. Whenever I asked if it meant we had six months to live or a year to live at any point, he would say, no, we're not at any point where I can give you a timeline, timeline correct? Something like that? Yep, because of all the new treatments and constantly changing. constantly changing. He's always been very upfront and honest and said, I can't give you that. And you asked that brave question, which neither of us wanted to ask. And I wanted to ask. <laughs> he very kindly said, you know, well, what do you guys think based on what you've seen and what you've heard? And I quickly said, yes, I think this gives me a timeline now. And then he shifted to me and I said, I don't know. And he's, I hope not. You said, I hope not. I hope not. not. And he said, but what do you think? What do you feel in your heart? And I said, yes. And that, that was it. And he went, mm -hmm. And he broke the news to us that... And I said, how long does that mean? And he said, I, have I said that here yet? He said, you have six to nine months to live, hopefully. Could be more, could be less. So that was our bombshell yesterday. He didn't cry in the appointment. He just kept petting me and getting information and I was just sobbing, <gasps> you know, that kind of crying. And then as soon as the team stepped out for something, they went to get some information. He's just started bawling. Broke down. Um, we asked more questions after that. Do you remember if any of them were? Anything? So I, I asked, kind of a hard question if the disease that's kind of causing this timeline is in the brain are we looking at her losing functions inability to speak walk talk all those things that are controlled by the brain memory because mm -hmm. I'm you know we're both afraid of that mm -hmm. and he said that most of the area that this is affecting is with motor movements mm -hmm. so your ability to move your eyes correctly, walk, move your arms, that kind of thing. And a little bit with memory. So that's concerning, you know, but your mobility has been pretty limited. So I feel like we can, we can hang with that. Um, I'm terrified. I know, me too. It is the day after we found out that I'm dying. Is that a fair way to say it? I don't know if that's problematic, if people are going to say don't say that, I don't know. But I have six to nine months to live, more or less, who knows. And today's the next day after finding that out. I'm really heartbroken. We've probably already filmed a video telling you guys all the details of that. So this is the next day. I didn't film yesterday because it was too hard. Yeah. Um, so we're at City of Hope the next day and we're here to get some procedure done to pull something out of my spine for testing and um, hopefully it's not that painful, hopefully it's quick yeah. and hopefully we're out of here soon so I can go see my babies. Yeah, that would be and then cool. We'll be telling them today the bad news. I've always wanted the fridge with the water right. spout. That's <laughs> true. Why don't we just get a fridge? We are done with our my spinal tap. It went well. I took pain medication and anxiety medication, so it didn't hurt. And I had to lay down flat for an hour afterwards, and that went well. I'm guessing because of my medications. She fell deep asleep. I fell deep asleep. She was comfortable flat. Yeah, and then Kyle and a nurse. Is that right, a nurse? Yeah. 
they were trying to wake me and they're asking me like what color are blueberries <laughs> no we're the, what okay year they, are we they didn't ask me that where are we they're asking me what year it is who's the president all that stuff do you know what you said right when you came out of your deep sleep no you said do you know where we are and you went oregon, oregon. i said oregon oh my gosh oh We are heading to San Diego for um, my brain radiation setup. It's called something else. I'll ask Kyle. But Kyle and I don't function quite like normal right now after finding out that I have six to nine months left. And so we didn't eat breakfast. We didn't pack snacks, nothing. And so we just pulled over on the side of the road I don't see the Starbucks, but he said we're at Starbucks. I don't see that. We're at Starbucks. He's gonna get me some snacks and water, and then he's gonna get himself a coffee and maybe some snacks. We even forgot to give the kids snacks or breakfast. So they're with Ash and Brad. Brad started feeding them right when they got there. So thank you, Brad, because whoops. Hello. We're here. <laughs> I'm terrified. Today's setup day for, I told them I'd tell you, you tell us what it's called, the brain radiation. So we are doing proton B therapy, I believe. And it is, from what I gathered, like a whole brain radiation and spine radiation. I don't know, we're not too sure. I'm done, it was so quick. So much quicker than we thought it was gonna be. I haven't told him much about it. It was easy. I'm fine. I don't know if my claustrophobia is getting better or if the anxiety me medicine they give me is what I need to, yeah. is like doing what it's supposed to to where I'm fine. But I am totally fine. I didn't get claustrophobic and this mask is more claustrophobia inducing than my other one. And you didn't get it. And I didn't get claustrophobic. It's crazy. I think it's just so much worse now. Or partly <laughs> while I was in there I thought my, maybe my brain subconsciously thinks you're already dying so what's no. the worst that can happen? I mean it could have changed your perspective like what's there to be claustrophobic about? I've got bigger things to worry yeah. about. I am um, so anxious. Today is day one of full spine and brain radiation and I woke up with these burning hot sweats where I'm clammy and just feel like a million degrees. I'm not a million degrees but I feel like I am and I'm just shaky and rocky and I just don't feel well. I'm just getting in my head felt so good when we had the fitting for it, so I don't know why I'm getting so in my head right now for the first round. Um, I was hoping I would be so much better with me being better for the fitting, but here I am, freaking out again. So hopefully I will calm down. I took anxiety medicine. Hopefully I will calm down and, and start getting ready and pack stuff and whatnot. Mm, I'm so scared. Okay, let's go. Just hope that she comes out soon and hope everything's going well. I'm done with my first spinal brain pro pro proton proton therapy therapy radiation radiation and once I went in, you know, I had my pain medicine and anxiety medicine kicking in. The biggest issue was pain. It is so sore over here. And yesterday we had the medicine put into my pleurisy. Hmm. Your pleural effusion. Yeah. To thin the fluid in there to help it come out easier because it was thickening. The fluid was thickening. And so I almost think it made it a little more painful for today's laying down, but that's okay. 
I have not filmed in many days and I keep saying I want to, but I feel so unwell from treatment that I haven't. That noise you hear is um, my oxygen. <laughs> we are parked at treatment and we're about to go in. What time is it and when is my... So it's 4.30, we have an appointment at 4.40. So we gotta go in. Yeah. I'm out of treatment. How did that go? Was it quick? Standard. Normal? Yeah. And then I saw my doctor, who is a different doctor here, and he is so wonderful, so great. And then when I went in there, as soon as they were positioning me, I have this new pain since before this treatment that is the cancer spreading to my right side of my body into my right lung and who, else, who knows what else yeah. and it just hurts really bad so ever since the beginning of my lung cancer journey journey laying flat has hurt me and so now the right side's at the beginning again and so it's like learning these new pains that it's never experienced and it was really hard and you know, it's that thing, focus on your breathing, just take deep breaths and relax. I can't take deep breaths, they hurt. It's a lot of shallow breaths, and I want so badly to take deep breaths and fall asleep or something. Bad that I think this is my last time, and I wanna be there for them their whole lives. I wanna protect them their whole lives. I wanna help get them ready forever, take them shopping, Help them learn, have them teach me stuff they learn. I want to be here forever for them. What was the best memory of the morning so far? Doing both of their hair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They both, I always have to say, look at me, look at me. They look at me and smile and giggle. And I just, it's one of my favorite things to do is their hair. <laughs> it always makes me so happy. And they're always so appreciative. Um, yeah, I would say that. Special driver we've never seen, Melanie, my best friend. And we are here for my eighth, yeah, eighth radiation, brain, full brain and spine radiation. Tomorrow is my ninth. And Wednesday's my 10th, AKA my last one. Last one. It's the bell ringing day. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. It's the bell ringing day. They said that by the last day, my hair will just fall out. But if you look right now. You can do the pulling thing. Do your pulling. Not a piece. <laughs> okay. Look. Look this. Tug, 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 tug. <sighs> Not a piece. And during every treatment, there's always a few pieces that come out when I run my fingers through my hair. And I'm not getting any. But they said the last day it all falls out. So we will see. My cousin always says I have magic hair. So maybe I do. We'll see. We are done with radiation. I am done with radiation. It went really well. I had a couple times where it hurt and overall it was great. I felt good about it. It was very peaceful and zen. Can you turn him? He's leaving. I'm on my way to my last treatment where I ring the bell, got my family here because it's a big deal. Go hold mommy's hand. Ready? <laughs> Can you guys give the cards to mommy that you made for her? Okay, let's see the cards. Great okay, job at please. the doctor's. <gasps> wow. When he drew those. I love it. Is that the doll? Mm -hmm. oh. oh my goodness. <gasps> and there's the angel mommy. Oh my goodness, I love it. That's 
beautiful. I love you, Mom. Is that the bell? Mm-hmm. And a balloon celebrating? Oh. Wow. What are we doing here? That's you ringing the bell. That's Daddy. <laughs> and there's me and Buddy. Oh, that is so cute. And we're watching our friends mm-hmm. swim around. Cards by Ellen. Cards by oh. I have like my esophagus is hurting, my throat is hurting from the radiation. I'm getting a headache. My face is really red today. And what's this right here? I don't know. My face is really red today. I think from the radiation. They said that with this radiation, it builds up. And mm-hmm. with my last radiation, or not my last one, the first one, it was 30 rounds of radiation on my chest. It took, by the end, it was just blisters all over. So it takes a while before it reacts or like shows the mm-hmm. what treatment did to it. And one of the things, they said I would lose all my hair. And look, you guys see, there is a lot of hair. But they said by the end, I will have it falling out. And I showed you guys that there was no hair falling out when I would run my fingers through it. Let's see. Let's see, uh, nothing there. I'm starting to have really bad scalp pain. They said that my hair would fall off after the final treatment. Oh, it hurts so bad. It hurts so bad. This is spreading to a wider area. It's like the, what are those called? Follicles? Yeah, the hair follicles are sore yeah. anyway the hair that's what moves. i get when i wear a hat too long it's like that yeah but it's, and it's like any when movement. i don't wear a hat all night i kept waking up from pain and uh, <laughs> Not hopefully, much you do hopefully it'll get better and i'm starting to lose hair now mm-hmm. so right here i just pulled out three hairs not a big deal two hairs uh, six looks like for we'll see i am still convinced i won't lose a lot of hair because i have so much hair yeah. but we'll see i guess let's vote on that too do you think i will lose a lot of hair and need to shave my head and here's my head how do i look see your little head peeking through <laughs> you can see my head peeking through peekaboo maybe river will like it peekaboo Oh, yeah, that'd be cute. <laughs> Wearing a head wrap. Cute. <laughs> but why am I wearing a head wrap? Well, after two plus years of battling cancer, I am finally balding. It is. I have lost hair, hair through many stages of treatment, just not enough to be balding. I have a lot of hair, and now I'm losing enough to be balding. So we're gonna shave it. Yep. Oh. Give a full side. Look at that, it's almost all gone. back here. Are you showing it? Mm, yep. And that pretty head. You can tell where the radiation did a lot of its work because it all the hair mainly is like all frontal top and the back's trying to stay on. It's a lot of it's gone too, but Rub your fingers like that. Yeah, let me hold it and then turn that way. So it's still pretty intact. Like I'm pulling. Normally we've just been pulling barely and things are coming out. So oh, this yeah. will need to be shaved. Yeah. Grab There you go. Good. Is that kind of like a comb cut? Yeah. Keep 
Keep going, baby. Look here. See how I'm holding it? Little because it's getting outside. Want to cut up your window? Now you're my hair cutter, Ellis. Yeah. We're doing girls' hair cutters. You always do it to me, now I'm doing it to you. You guys are so sweet. I cut yeah. Winnie's hair, too. When he's doing great, she doesn't even need daddy. <laughs> All right, guys, Barbie is here. No, 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 not this one. Okay, get out of here. Barbie. <laughs> oh yeah. Look at that. It's me. You're literally the Barbie. I put on hoop earrings like the her. dress, the earrings. It gets perfect. Put on a dress. My goodness. Look at that. That's the most gorgeous Besides. thing I've ever seen. We did a nice I shave it. on it. It's smooth. We did it. Yep. Hello everybody. I am sad today. I um, told Kyle I feel the D word today. For our household, the D word means depressed. And that's what I feel today. Um, because of cancer, because I'm sick all the time. I've been sick for two years. Um, like, sick every day for two years the medical side of things um jenny has um a ct and an mri and a follow-up this week um so it was kind of a big week coming up i so, got a text today that i on tuesday I have a MRI? scan or something i think cts are on the tuesday and then wednesday is your follow-up with salvia which, or, uh, you know, it's no, uh, not a big deal. We already know what's going on pretty much in your body. So, just gonna go do it. Today's MRI, CT scan day. We haven't been on treatment for a long time. So we're not expecting the CT to show magical great things. But we're hoping that the um, proton therapy did some justice in the brain. I'm, I'm hoping to see that there's stuff Whatever's happening is stuff we can take care of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna get through these scans. Not worry too much about the results. Doesn't matter. And then see our doctors tomorrow. So the biggest thing is just getting through the scans with your pain and with laying flat, which I think you're gonna be able to do because the last two you have. And um, get out of here at a decent hour. That would be really nice to get out of here. Oh, I am so tired. I am out of my scans. That so I'm yeah. grateful for those, grateful for your team. That was the quickest MRI CT combo we've ever had. It's okay. So we had a big appointment today. We got, um, I'll go over the scan results. I can't believe we're still doing scan result videos. Um, they're always nerve-wracking for us. Um, the brain MRI came back and everything uh, was reducing in size. It was like nodule after nodule after nodule after nodule that was reducing. So the proton therapy did and is continuing to do work in there, which is amazing. And then the chest hasn't had any treatment going on in months. So the chest wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, honestly. Um, there was a few more nodules, but nothing out of control, and it's still contained in the lung. And the fluid wasn't that bad on the right side. Yeah. So I think your lungs are just, I think what you're feeling is, yes, fluid, but also just your lungs are really, really sick. And they haven't had treatment for a long time. So anyway, it wasn't that bad. The chest kind of just stayed a little bit the same with a few more nodules, nothing crazy, but the cancer hasn't spread all over. 
So that was kind of good news and we are going to start a chemotherapy treatment next week um, along with a chemotherapy directly to the brain. So we'll probably go over that in more detail when we get more information on that because we don't really have it yet. But what we do know is that next week we will start lung chemotherapy, um, regular old chemotherapy. It's not a targeted drug. Um, and this is a, you know, she's tolerated chemo pretty well in the past. Yes, it makes her feel sick and knocks her out and makes her feel gross. But it's once I, every three weeks. I've shown success with it. She's shown success with it, and they want to be still aggressive because they're still wanting to take that six to nine months and prove it wrong. So yes, um, and so do we. Hello, everyone. Oh no, what? we are at City of Hope oh. <laughs> on a Friday when we were not supposed to be. What is going on? What's going on? <laughs> Whatever shall we do? <laughs> well. We got a call yesterday afternoon, evening. What would you say, afternoon? Uh, yeah, afternoon. And they said, I won't tell you all the details. Just, we might have a big... There are, there are no details. We might have a big change of plans. Yeah, my NP called and asked if I could come in today because they have a change of plans for my treatment. So we were planning on me starting chemo and something for my brain, I don't remember what. Uh -huh. And then, now we're gonna go in and see what they wanna change and why. <laughs> and I'll let you guys know. I hear a tone in his voice that I haven't heard in a while and it was a very hopeful tone. He left a voicemail. So I called him back right away and, um, and he said, hey, you know, everything we just talked about yesterday, this was, you know, the day after our appointment um, with chemo and with the brain and everything we're gonna not do that we're gonna try something that just popped up and I'm thinking what he has like a hopeful tone in his voice um, basically they've been uh, there's another clinical trial that is out there that City of Hope is actually the pusher of the front runner of one of the doctors that's that works with our doctor and it is a clinical trial that focuses on EGFR, non-small cell lung cancer. It's still not specific Which as is to- what I have. Yep. But then I'm Exxon 20 within that umbrella. Correct. It's not specific to Exxon 20. It's specific to EGFR. And they're trying to find out if it's specific to Exxon They're trying to find out if it's specific to Exxon 20 or Exxon 19. Yep. Or Exxon 21. And, um, so then they asked us to come in today to talk about it and to possibly sign consent forms for it and to discuss the benefits, the risks, side effects, and what we should do going forward. So obviously we came in and we've seen in the past and I've heard in the past people question why we keep trying things or why we'd put you through another trial. Um, I believe that you and I would only do something if we truly think it's going to benefit you. And this, I believe that you and I would only do something. Um, I believe that you and I would only do something if we truly think it's going to benefit you. So, if we're going to try something, this is a great option to try. Yeah. You know, you've already done. Chemo is what we were going to do as the alternative. That's really hard too. It's hard on your body. It's. You know, brutal. it's brutal. So here's an option that jumped out that they opened up another slot for, just for her. We had a very quick appointment today. Jenny had uh, an EKG, three of them, one after the other, and then um, some blood work. And those are the last, oh no, not the last, the final tests for the clinical trial. Her last one will be on Friday at the eye exam place and I remember saying the last time we went to that eye exam place oh no this will be our last time coming here I didn't think it would be and it is not because we have another clinical trial hopefully in the works and they need to check our eyes again I didn't again. know why we'd be back but I felt like we'd be back for something yeah so 
All right, welcome back from the fastest eye appointment ever. Slouching. <laughs> that was so fast. Yeah. I was falling asleep in the chair and the optometrist comes out and goes, Kyle, Kyle. I was like, oh. And he goes, come on back. And I'm like panicking. And he goes, no, no, she's fine. She's fine. She just needs help out. And I said, oh, okay. So got her out. That was fast. Good morning, everyone. It is early on Wednesday, my new treatment day. Mm, I'm so scared. My anxiety is really high this morning, and I can feel an anxiety attack or panic attack coming on. And so Kyle got me anti-anxiety medication, and hopefully that's gonna help calm me down because I am so scared and I don't want to freak out and ruin the day. Hello everyone. Welcome to today, Wednesday, treatment day. Uh, 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 I'm so nervous. How do you feel going into today? Good. 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 Glad to be here. Um... The only thing that makes me glad to be here is A, that I'm getting treatment, and B, it's been so long that I haven't had treatment. Yeah. Love you. See ya. Oh, and then I'll take the kids. We're back home, and Kyle has gotten all the good news that we have our same clinical trial nurse. Amazing. Did we tell you that? Our same clinical trial nurse as when I was on Blue, which we love her, so that's great. And then, um... You got approved. I got approved. But I, I'm sure you said that, but, you know, I got to hear that and see that. Um, that everything went well everything today. Everything went well. But you made it through day one. We have to go back tomorrow. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to day two of our first day of our new clinical trial. It is Thursday, and I'm feeling okay. Honestly, I'm very nervous. I'm very scared. The only side effects I think I'm feeling are nausea, and a little diarrhea, and... A little more pain. A little more pain, yeah. Other than that, I feel the same. We're out. We're gonna go home and get the kids. Mm -hmm. I think they're at my sister's house. And I miss them so much. Family bed night. Here I come. Yep. And that'll put a wrap to our first two days of this treatment. Um, I still feel okay. Just nauseous. Stomach is a little queasy. And tired. Yeah. Yeah. You did great. And I feel honestly depressed. Really sad. Yeah. I don't know why it triggers sadness and depression when it's a new option. Uh, clinical trial research follow-up day. We're going to meet with uh, your doctor's team and then um, be cleared. The oncology team. Yeah, and then cleared for another round of hopefully testing. Um, well, they can't deny you today because you're not getting blood drawn. So it's just a checkup to see how you're doing. So. Let's go. Hello, everyone. It is the next day. Um, it's like one, and we have fluids hooked up to my port, which helped me a lot, so I'm very grateful for them. My appetite has been going up. I don't know if that's part of it or if my appetite is just going up, but I'm doing all right. Um, we are leaving our doctor's office. There's beautiful, beautiful plants roses. here, and we are going to see if we're gonna have, if I'm having a pulmonary embolism or something, because I'm having really bad shortness of breath. Um, I'm gonna do my, brisket appointment get that done and then we're gonna go do 
a CT scan, is that right, honey? Yeah, so to they want to see if see, the pulmonary well, embolism is... first would be to rule out a clot. Or a Second clot. would be... City of Hope's calling me. Oh, answer. Okay, gotta go. My nurse called and said, I will be getting the CT after the brisket appointment today. Yes. So we might be here a little longer because we're adding in a CT scan, but we shall see. I would rather us be safe than sorry and healthy, so. And how did we get to this point? Jenny's been experiencing very heightened shortness of breath. So of course, they have to first rule out clotting, which would be the CT for pulmonary embolisms, but then they're gonna look at, is there inflammation going on? Is there more fluid buildup? Whatever it is, do we need to increase our oxygen? So the CT will tell them that, and then they're gonna call us. Obviously, if there's an emergency, we'll stay here, but um, they said they should probably follow up with a call letting us know about the CT. So we're gonna do treatment, then we're gonna go to the CT, and then hopefully go home safely. I just had my CT scan. It went well. Makes me feel kind of ugh. We are done. We finished your clinical trial. Um, everything went well. We took blood. We did everything we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And then um, we did the CT, like I told you guys. Haven't heard anything yet. It's been about an hour since you did it. A little over an hour. So we're... Let's see what it says. I'm nervous for what it says, but then I'm also already confused for what it's going to say. Yeah. Because what's it going to say? What's it gonna say? Nobody even knows. Nobody knows. We would only be guessing. So let's just let it tell us what we... Let's just pray and hope it's... Not much. Okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Ashley and Kyle are acting really weird. I don't know why. We're ready to go to the doctors. We have an appointment today uh, with our doctors. We called them yesterday. Um, we're gonna just do some scans. See what's going on in your body and go from there. Um, they said there was a chance they might want to keep you and observe you, so we're um, gonna go find out. You know, we're gonna take some blood and they're gonna look at you and then we'll see what they want to do. We'll go from there. But they want to come see me at my house before I go, which you're always here, but she never wants to come. I asked Ashley see to be me. here yeah. for this appointment. Yeah. Before I go, so I'm not supposed to feel like I'm dying. No, I just wanted to take a day off of work. Well, I'm glad you're here if I'm dying. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. You saw us leaving our house. Ashley's with us. She parked somewhere in this parking lot. Um, Honey, do you want the grayish one or the greenish one? I like the green. They're both greenish and grayish. So today I went to the store because Jenny was craving something, which ended up not eating. <laughs> she said, I can't do it. Um, and she said, pick me out something cute. So I found these matching friendship bracelets. I ate most of my protein. Yeah. But not your Ravi Ravioli. Um, so I bought these friendship bracelets that the brand or the name of them was Unexpected Miracle. So I thought that was nice. And she Isn't likes them. Sweet. Yeah. Unexpected miracle. Miracle. He bought me a bracelet friendship. Lucky string stringlets bracelet. Yeah. So, we are here today. Is a oh, I'm getting chocolate all over my crop. Today is a regular scheduled appointment, but um, I called her doctor yesterday and just told him some of my concerns. Um, you know, with the appetite and with um, some of the confusion and the breathing, pain, just a lot of concerns. So that's why Ashley's here with us because she wants to ask some questions too. And they said that there's a possibility that Jenny might have to stay today to be observed. They want to possibly observe her, um, possibly scan her and see what's going on. So. We'll see what today turns out to be. We will definitely film. Um, but Jenny's okay. She's been up and at it today. And we made it. We're here on time. It's a warm fall day. Let's go in. We're going to wheel in. and. Uh, I love you guys. 
I love you. Love you guys. Love you. Ashley, I love you. Everyone, I love you. So Ashley's in there with Jen. Um, I guess I should backtrack a little bit on how and what we're doing here. Today was a normal scheduled appointment for Jenny, her clinical trial day where she comes in and um, takes the pill, they do some EKG, she sees her doctor, does some blood, all that stuff. Um, but this week has been really, really hard. Um, Jenny always told me to be as honest as possible if she can express what she's thinking. So, you know, Jenny is not fully able to express what she's thinking at this time. Um, the confusion has been building. The sentences she's been able to form have been less. Um, and she is not making the most sense all the time. Uh, this is just within the past week and a half. It is moving quick, whatever it is. Um, appetite has been next to nothing. Um, drinking water has been next to nothing. And obviously, the last thing I want to do is see my wife suffer. So obviously called the team, told them what we were seeing. Um, and they're concerned, just obviously like I am. Um, and we've now got into the conversation which we had today with her doctors where do we go from here hello that was her clinical trial nurse saying that her MRI was moved to tomorrow so we have to scan her brain and see if the confusion the stumbling over a lot of words the not kind of making sense is a result of what's going on in her brain and the fluid and the cancer or is it the medication that she's on is it dehydration is it a UTI is it um, you know it could be a number of things he was saying that can cause this so basically is it something that we can reverse with medication or are we at the point where we as a family need to talk about moving into just pure comfort for the rest of her life as in right now I would say her quality of life is pretty poor pretty poor not I, it doesn't meet my standard it doesn't meet her sister's standard it, it doesn't meet Jenny's standard according to her so we don't want to do that to her so we've got to find out what the next best step is if it's getting hooked up with a great hospice team if it's a different type of treatment if it's just getting off of this drug and taking some time off whatever it is we're gonna decide as a family and go forward we are now back on our way to City of Hope for my brain MRI. Hopefully we get there soon. I am very nervous. I have anxiety. Let's hope and pray it goes well. We have said a prayer at the house and we're gonna say more. All right, Jenny just had her home health nurse come and hook her up with hydration. Now she gets it three times a week. Jenny is having a much better day today. Um, as opposed to the last couple days. Up and at it, eating a little bit more, feeling a little bit better. Because I I made Olivia and Mel's famous cookies. You ate them. Doctor came in with this glow and um, he said, the brain MRI actually looks awesome. Like really encouraging. Um, a lot of the things that were seen on the previous scan were no longer seen, stable, or shrinking. Nothing growing, nothing progressing. Uh, that is not, and he said, right now, it looks like it's something that we can kind of reverse. It doesn't seem like it's the disease that's causing the confusion. Um, and we have noticed Jenny perking up um, so it could be many things. Um, he wants us to get in contact with our supportive, our palliative care team to go over the pain regimen. Maybe that needs to be adjusted. Maybe it's a little bit too high. Um, we, um, Jenny was put on steroids, which she's not happy about, but, um, they do improve the breathing. 
Um, it also helps with appetite. They gave her an appetite stimulant, hopefully to help her appetite, which has definitely picked up. And now that she gets hydration three times a week as opposed to just the two, uh, which has also seemed to really help her. So we did this uh, eye exam. These are once a month with this clinical trial and the, the purpose of it is to uh, make sure that the treatment is not causing any kind of like um, eyesight problems, whether it, you know, it can cause different things on the eyeball, it can cause uh, difficulties with vision and whatever, but Jen has consistently great vision. Um, her, um, the eye doctor came in and basically said the only thing she's got is a little bit of uh, dryness in her eyes. Everything else looks amazing. So we have eye drops for that, um, but other than that, she looks great. I took my EKG medication. No, your clinical trial medication. Clinical, clinical trial medication, and I am not feeling well. I feel jittery, yucky, and all I want to do is go to sleep, but I can't go to sleep. I'm just so jittery and uncomfortable. Uh, <laughs> I want to go home. I want to feel better. I want the cancer to be gone. And that's about it. Jenny and I are now in the car, ready to go home. It's 8.30. We're gonna go get some quick food, get it in the car and then go get our kids. They're at Jenny's sister's house. Names with the highs. <laughs> I have bad news, guys. I'm dying. Like I'm actually dying right now. I'm scared, I'm so scared. I don't know what to do. Um, we got the news that Oh. It's not looking good. Um, it looks like I'm dying. Yeah. It's dying. Um, the doctor came in and told us that um, if the breathing continues, which he thinks it will, um, that you'd have to be put on a, a ventilator and just be sedated, which is not what Jenny wants. I had a friend do that and she was in misery. She was posting that it was absolutely terrible and she hated it. And so I told him I didn't want that. No. It's where she was just tubed to a machine and had like this big thing on her head. Just what she was. <laughs> And she couldn't breathe. Um, do you want me to get him now and you just talk? No, you talk. Okay. Because I can't really, I don't even know what's I'm... going on. I woke up to Kyle crying, saying it's time or something like that. Yeah, so doctor came in. Obviously, it's a weekend, so there's not a lot going on here. But um, we went in originally because the Jenny's breathing has been uh, so uh, labored. So they have her on a high flow machine, really high flowing oxygen. And that's not something that can be replicated at home. Um, so she's here and she can't go home. Um, and we wanted to be at home if we ever got this news, but we unfortunately can't. They think if we tried to transfer her home, she might not make it. So we're gonna be here. The doctor said that um, we haven't had a chest scan since she started that trial. We were due for one in about a week. Uh, looks like the left lung is mainly tumor now. Um, so that's why the breathing has been so hard. And um, he said that 
It looks like if we continue going this way, we might have uh, days with uh, Jenny. So, um, everybody's going to come down and yeah. see you. This happened over the weekend. Um, for the past five days, um, if you guys saw, um, you know, obviously her health has been getting worse. But um, for the past five days, it's been kind of extreme at home to where any kind of physical exertion using the restroom basically was all she was doing that was causing her to get up at all was causing her to get extremely short of breath um, so we let her team know and they were like concerned um, and then eventually got to the point where we couldn't deny that there was something more going on than usual so we drove to the ER pretty close to us and um, she had multiple pulmonary embolisms that was the first sign that things weren't great and then um the the oncologist who works with our doctor came in and said based on her breathing and based on what he sees in her body and then the ct scan uh the ct scan was pretty brutal um her left lung is almost uh like her left lung is mainly like a, a tumor at this point like the tumor is just grown um and that's when he told us we don't look like we have much time. Um, Jenny is not in a lot of pain. I don't want to speak for her. As far as like her traditional cancer pains in the past, no. What's getting her right now is the shortness of breath feeling. So they have her on this high flow oxygen. She was officially switched over to uh, hospice care uh, this morning. Um, and some amazing, amazing news is that um, if all things go as planned, um, Jenny will be able to come home and um, live out the rest of whatever beautiful time that she has left at home with her family, uh, with us, with the kids, with her sister and her closest friends and family. Um, and we just feel like that's a stinking miracle that could only happen with so many prayers and God because, oh, sorry, flowers having an asthma attack. Um, when we were originally told that, that uh, her days were numbered, the doctors weren't sure if we were gonna be able to get her home safely and she might have to, to, um, to do hospice and finish her days out in the hospital, which is okay because we felt safe there, um, but it's also not what Jenny wanted. And so we as a family fought really hard. And I gotta say that the hospital that she's at has been absolutely amazing. They called tons of hospice companies and found a really big one that has the certain machines that Jenny needs to be home and in peace and avoid some of the things that Jenny did not want for her end of life. So she's not gonna be hooked up to a bunch of tubing and um, all this kind of stuff that she did not want. Um, she's gonna be at home and comfortable and safe. And we've already talked to her hospice nurse who seems like an absolute angel from above. Um, takes a certain kind of person to uh, to work that in that field, from what I'm gathering. And they seem really, really kind. We've talked to two people from the company today, just absolutely kind. Um, so uh, from going from the news that Jenny's time with us is numbered, short, to we're going to have to finish out in the hospital, we all accepted it. We decorated our whole room with Christmas, because that's her favorite um, Christmas tree. We did presents. Uh, we did the whole thing. Now getting told that she gets to come home, and because of the medication she's on right now, she's having moments of heavy, heavy sleep, and it's so nice to see her sleep. Um, but then all I can think is, please wake up so I can uh, talk to you again and see you. 
and right now she keeps waking up and uh, in a good way you know she has a nice long sleep and then she wakes up and I get to see her again and um, it's nice to see her it's nice to see her she's officially been switched over to comfort care um, and you know nothing's ever set in stone we've learned so I hesitate to give every single detail but just know that Jenny is okay Jenny, the plan is for Jenny to go home. And, um, she's had some big smiles the last couple days. <laughs> um, she's also had some confusion, um, because of the meds that she's on. And that's okay. It seems to come and go. Um, and she has a, an absolutely amazing support system around her. Flower, come here. With her family, with her friends. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't tell you enough on how amazing her family has been and the staff has been. They've been a true blessing. We, um, feel like a lot of answered prayers when they came in and, and fought to have her go home in a good way, safe way. Um, and then, like I said, we haven't talked a lot with hospice yet. We're still setting everything up, but... We've already talked to her nurse and the manager and gosh, they just seem so kind. And all they want to do is make sure that Jenny is um, safe and happy. Um, the hospital we were at even arranged to have um, Flower come visit for just a short time because that's all they're allowed. But when you're on comfort care, end of life care, they, they let you, um, they have certain things that they let you do that um, some of the average families, you know, aren't fortunate enough to do yet because of everybody's situation is different but flower got to come jenny got to have a lot of family visitors um so we feel like a lot of prayers are being answered and um, like i said she is very very peaceful right now um she is on a lot of medication so i don't know how much filming we're gonna do of her in this aspect but i am taking a lot of videos of her um for us um, some private videos for just us, for the kids to watch later on in life and to see how even in these really hard days, all she wants to do is cuddle her babies in bed and um, be close to them. It's pretty amazing. She's no longer doing any cancer treatment. She no longer has to take any of that medication. Um, she no longer has to talk to an oncologist. Um, her team did reach out and say that they truly love Jenny. Um, more than a patient, you know, more than a patient. Uh, they just, um, her clinical trial nurse called and was crying on the phone and saying she loved her. Um, all the nurses in the hospital right now that she's with absolutely fall in love with her. And all they keep saying is that she's so kind through all of this, no matter what she's told. She's always worried about the nurses. She's worried about her kids. She's worried about her family. Um, she is always putting others first, huh? which is how she has always been. So I'm not going to take too much time. I just wanted to pop on and give you guys a quick update because a lot of people are asking. She is okay. She is comfortable. She is resting. Jenny wanted me to keep just doing little updates and letting you know. Uh, yesterday was a big, big day. I'll start off by saying Jenny is doing well, um, as well as we can in this situation, but she's, uh, made it yesterday home. Um, and it was such a smooth transition. Um, we met her, uh, hospice nurse in person, um, had some very long, difficult conversations, but, you know, we understand that they have to be had. Um, but she was nothing but nothing but nice um and yesterday was a very i want to say like emotional like an emotionally draining day um you know um but it was so nice to finally all sleep in the same room together uh, we set up jenny's uh, hospital bed at uh, her request in the living room right up against the window thank you flower um right up against the window we bought some stick-on bird feeders that go on the window because she would, she loves that. She did before um, all this happened, and so we're going to do that again. 
Um, we're today is a big day. We're trying to f fully decorate the house for Christmas, and we we go all out for Christmas. So um, that was something that she wanted. So we got Christmas sheets on the beds. We got Christmas sheets on her hospital bed. We um, I have someone coming to put our lights up today. Normally I uh, always do that, but we don't have a lot of time. Uh, so someone's gonna put up our lights for us. We have people, we have her sister over who's helping us reorganize the living room um, to, to make it more suitable for visitors because we had to scoot everything over for her hospital bed and now we're gonna kind of make it a nice living space so that anyone who wants to come visit in her family um, can come sit with her. Um, we had a lot of people visit yesterday. Her parents visited, um, some of her closest friends visited, uh, obviously her sister and her sister's husband and their family, they were all here. And um, once the nurse left, um, you know, we were taught, flower, flower. We were taught how to do all the medications. We were taught how to, um, when to administer them properly, what to do if there's an emergency, what to do if we, Flower wants to just join this live, so come on. Oh, goodness. Um, Flower slept on Jenny's bed last night, um, <laughs> and the nurse gave us the approval because Jenny's not really hooked up to much um, as far as dangerous cords or anything, and Flower stays pretty safe up at the bottom of, uh, of her, tr of her uh, bed. And she slept with Mom. She was so happy to have Mom home. Um, and Jenny slept a lot yesterday. She was very, very sleepy. It was a big day. We had to do the transition um, from the hospital to home. We had to do the transport vehicle. Um, it took a lot out of her. Um, and so she did a lot of, a lot of resting. Thank you, Flower. Then um, last night she woke up for a little bit when the visitors were over and you know, anytime we see her getting a little bit sleepy, everyone, of course, we just kind of let her rest at whatever time she wants. Um, and she fell asleep. And then, you know, I talked with some of her closest friends and family. And then, um, then Winnie, Ellis, and I slept right next to mommy on the couch. So we set up the couch right next to her hospital bed. So we're all like within reaching distance of her. So this is just an update to let you know that Jenny, our beautiful, beautiful girl, our beautiful angel, has become an angel. Jenny became a beautiful angel on November 5th, 2023, at exactly five o'clock. We thought it was pretty fitting that she passed right at five on November 5th. She was always big into signs, numbers. This is beautiful. So Jenny's earthly body is gone. But as many of you know, her soul and her spirit will live on in all of us forever. <laughs> she got to come home she got to be with her kids. She got what she wanted at the end. Um, she was only on hospice for, I think less than a week. Feels like forever, but it was a short time. And she was ready to go. She was ready to go. Her poor body couldn't fight anymore. And let me redirect that. Her poor body 
went through enough. Went through enough. Jenny always told me that she was going to be excited for one thing when she passed. Among other things, but you know what I mean. <clears throat> there was something on this earth that she felt like kind of a booyah moment for when she passed. And she used to tell me, I want you to let everyone know that I didn't lose any battle. I didn't lose the fight. I didn't lose anything. I beat I beat cancer. And some people might say, what does that mean? She used to say, when I'm gone and my heart is no longer beating, that cancer will not be able to survive. The cancer needs a body to thrive on. And now hers is gone. The cancer is dead. She finally beat it. Um, these last few days have been very, very empty. I miss my wife so much. I miss my wife. I'm gonna have to learn a lot about this uh, process. <laughs> Life after loss. Right now, it doesn't feel possible. It doesn't feel real. I feel the heaviest feeling I've ever felt. I feel sick to my stomach. Um, we do have a date for Jenny's service. Um, it is it has not happened. It, um, we really, really wanted to take our time. Um, it is a smaller venue, so we will be sending out information. Um, and then for all, you know, those of you on here, uh, we will live stream it. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who've asked that they want to be there, they want to pay their respects, their condolences to Jen, and they want to see the beautiful venue and all this stuff. We're going to live stream it because there's just not enough room. Jen's got a big family and um, it's going to be closest family and friends and then uh, we're going to live stream that. So we will have information on that. Be on the lookout for that because I know there's a lot of people asking but it hasn't happened yet. It will definitely be after um, the holiday season if I can just say that. So there's time. Um, Instagram messages. I just wanted to say um, to family and friends and anyone else on here, I am not able to get to half of them, but I try to at least give a quick response to a lot of them because I appreciate what you're sending. Um, so many kind people are reaching out, sharing either their grief or their positive light or a way that Jenny has impacted their life or that they just miss hearing Jen and it's nice to hear that I'm not the only one that misses the heck out of her voice and seeing her. Um. Hello guys, welcome you to my channel, Nice Nivon. So the video you've just watched is based on videos that were uploaded to Jenny Apple's YouTube channel. And it shows a very small picture of what Jenny went through. You can watch her full videos on Jenny on her YouTube channel. And you can also check out her other videos on her Instagram. So... Jenny passed away on November 5th, 2023 at exactly 5 o'clock in the morning.
Her real name was Jenny Appleford. She began uploading videos to her YouTube in 2015 before she got sick. Her content was mainly about family life and being a mom. In 2021, she was diagnosed with terminal cancer and she chose to use her social media accounts to document her journey. Jenny was married to Kylie Appleford and together they lived in California with their kids. The couple shared two young children named Ellis and Winnie. On March 19, 2021, Jenny was diagnosed with lung cancer despite being a non-smoker. Over the years, it had advanced to stage 4 spreading to her brain and some of her lymph nodes. On October 29th, she released a live stream titled I'm Dying. Kyle then revealed that Jenny would have to remain in the hospital as she was having trouble breathing. Kyle also revealed that Jenny's left lung is now mainly covered in tumor and said the doctors feared that Jenny may only have days remaining. Sadly, on Tuesday, November 7th, Kyle released a YouTube video announcing that Jenny had sadly passed away. Here at Nice Newborn, our thoughts and prayers are with Kyle, Jenny's children and all her family.